and record this anyway. Um, all right, so uh, how's everybody doing? Looks like people are doing well. Um, let me talk a little bit about um, associative arrays. And you've already got this in the assignment. But let me just make sure that, that people are clear on, on what this is about. So hopefully people have, have already gotten uh, you know most of the parsing done. And I've gotten some notes from people and things like that. Yeah, let me share my screen. All right. Yeah, so I'm just going to talk about this for about five, ten minutes, and then we're going to go back to uh, doing presentations. And we may do this for the next few days, um, try to keep up with new material, but uh, mostly going through presentations. So, um, you know, hopefully people are already already parsing, and, and you've got yourself to a point where you have, um, you know, a phrase like... Um, You know, phrase equals, this is fun, right? Or something, you know, in a shell variable. And you want to store that somewhere, and you want to be able to count how many times you see that phrase. And sort of the way we learn to do that first is, is by using something that we might call parallel arrays. And the idea of parallel arrays would be, for example, we'd have an array of strings called, you know, phrases. And we'd have an array of tallies or counts for how many times we saw each phrase. I'll just call that tally. Right? And this is, this is you know, an array of strings. This is an array of integers. Um, and then we'd have, you know, something like... Um, an array length. And then we basically store information in parallel in these two arrays. So the first phrase we have is this is fun. And we see that one time and then we have a phrase like cool stuff. And we saw that three times and we saw a phrase like go home. And we saw that, you know, one time. And our array length at this point would be 3. And so when we want to, to look at our phrases, what do we do? We go through our phrases array, look at index 0, 1, and 2. And the tally for each of those phrases is stored in the tally array, index 0, 1, and 2. So did we find the phrase cool stuff? Well, we search this array from 0 through 2, right, length minus 1. And we compare each entry to see if it's equal to cool stuff. And if it is and it's stored at, say, index 1, then we go to tally at index 1, and we would increment that. All right, so this is, this is the usual way that we store um, multiple pieces of information in arrays, so parallel arrays. Um, an alternative to that is to use what's called an associative array. Associative arrays are also called hashes. And the basic idea, we'll, we'll take these apart in 222, we'll actually code them ourselves. But the basic idea is, you know, a traditional array has some name. And we reference the items in there with some index. And this index is an int starting from 0, going up to some length minus 1. And what we store in here could be, you know, characters, could be integers, could be some complex structure, could be pointers to character arrays, right? But the indexing of this thing is done with sequential integers starting from zero. All right, in an associative array, exactly the same idea, except our index can be pretty much anything. So in Bash, our index could be any string, any collection of characters that we want. And so we can have um, these examples from the assignment. 
right? So um, you you create an associative array with a declare statement. Usually arrays are just kind of figured out by bash because you're using something like an array, it becomes an array. But for an associative array, you actually declare it with a declare dash a statement. And then when you want to store something in the array, you just say name of the array bracket and whatever your index is. Now I could make this index 0, 1, 2, 3, but I can also make it something more interesting like a word or a phrase, right? And, and then this is just, you know, a bash variable and I can assign it a value with any legal right hand side. All right, so the syntax is really peculiar, um, but you know, you learn to use it and you just kind of stick with it and, and it works. Um, so when you want to pull out a value from an array, right, it's array name bracket index, that whole thing goes inside curly brackets and that has a dollar sign in front. Okay, the angle brackets are just delimiters I'm printing, that's not part of it, but dollar sign curly bracket and then, you know, variable name bracket index. All right, so that's how you, you pull an element out of an array to store an element into the array. It's just variable name bracket index on the left-hand side. And then the other thing we want to do is iterate because with an array that's indexed from 0, 1, 2 up through the length minus 1, we can just make a for loop for index equals 0, index less than len, index plus plus. With an associative array, we don't know what the indexes are. They're not necessarily consecutive integers starting from 0. And so how are we going to pull out our elements one at a time, right? Because we have an index called hello and an index called no and so on. So we, we use this for statement, right? Remember, this is a for statement I'm letting you use in bash for this course. For key in, and then you say dollar sign curly bracket, exclamation mark, name of the array bracket at sign. It's weird syntax. It's just what, what you got to do, right? And each time that you go through this loop, key will take on the value of another key from your associative array. So if I run through this for loop, um, one time through my key will be equal to hello, another time by, another time what, question mark, and another time no with an exclamation mark. The order's not guaranteed, okay? But you're guaranteed if you go through this loop all the way till it kicks out, key will have taken on every value um, of, of the array. Um, I see someone says keep forgetting we're not supposed to use for loops. Yeah, that's that's just for loops have a different syntax and it just leads to confusion more often than not. I've tried doing for loops sometimes not doing it others. It seems to work better to just say they're forbidden for 224. Three more weeks then you can use for loops. In bash you can always use them in C. All right, so this for loop, right, key takes on the value of one of these keys, and, you know, I'm just echoing it out here, but then if I want to access an element from my array, right, remember it's dollar sign curly bracket, name of the array, which is hash, bracket, and then the index, which in this case is in a variable called key. So this loop will go through and it'll pull things out of my hash one at a time in no particular order. So throw this code into, into a bash script and play around with it, right? It's all that you need to know about dealing with hashes for this assignment. Declare it, load some values in, pull some values out, iterate over all the keys. Those are the four operations. Associative arrays are a fabulous tool. You can do so much with them. When I first learned about associative arrays, it changed my life. Everything I did for the next six months, I did with associative arrays. I wrote compilers and, and language parsers and, and all kinds of weird stuff. All with associative arrays. It, it was like, you know, my, my new hammer that I used for, like, whether I needed a screwdriver or a power drill, I used my hammer on it. Um, and, and they really are fun. They, they make it so much easier to do a lot of things like, you know, parallel arrays or, or things like that. Um, let's see. So our hash array is named hello by what, etc. So our hash array in here is just called hash. Okay, that's the name of the array. My indices, the index that I'm using to access my elements, I have an index called hello, one called by, one called what, one called no. So this takes the place of, you know, like 0, 1, 2, and 3 that I would use with a plain old array. Um, but instead of using integers in here, I'm using these words to, to index the information stored. 
and we we think of this sometimes as as pairs, key value pairs. So the key is the index, and the value is the thing stored associated with that index. Yeah, you can call your your uh, array whatever you want, but if we're trying to record phrases, you're probably going to use your phrase as the index, right? And so now I'm going to have this this whole you know phrase hash array, and at entry, you know, hello again. I'm going to store how many times I've seen that phrase. And at entry, you know, uh, run away, I'm going to store how many times I've seen that phrase. And so when you find a phrase, all you have to do is look up the current tally in this array, increment it by one, store it back in there. And if this phrase is not found in the array, it will come back with a blank. But if you take a blank and you add one to it, you get one. So really take, you know, current count equal to um, phrase hash bracket phrase, or dollar sign phrase if it's a variable, and then set, you know, current count equal dollar sign print, print current count plus one, and then uh, phrase hash bracket dollar sign phrase equals current count or however you want to piece it together. All right, so, so like I say, throw this into a script and start playing around with it, but the whole idea behind associative arrays is to be able to take um, pairs of information and associate them with one another. So if, if I want to know the value associated with some string, image, uh, piece of music, whatever, right, I can use an associative array. And, and you know, there's, there's cognitive theories that this is, this is really central to how our brains work, right? Our, our memory is not stored as an array that we index starting from zero. That would be horrible. Well, it would be good for tests. But it would be horrible, right, to um, have to remember someone's name by starting at the beginning of your memory array and going through until you find that name, right? So we have associations, our indices, our, our, you know, names and sounds and smells and, and references from other things that we've associated. And so, you know, you open an old book and you smell mildew on the paper and suddenly you remember eating cookies at your grandmother's house or whatever, you know. Um, it's, it's this kind of structure that's potentially going on there. Um, very different but really powerful way to organize information. So like I say, in, in 222 in winter, we'll actually code these up. We'll see how to implement them. Um, and it'll be using some of the stuff from 215, some of the uh, number theory stuff. All right, so any questions before we go back to um, presentations? Uh, this is this is just sample code. I'm not saying you're going to use this verbatim in in your homework, but this is sample code that shows you how to declare an array, how to store a value in the array, how to retrieve a value from the array, and how to iterate over all the indices or keys associated with that array. But how you use that is up to you. But basically, once you've got a phrase, store that phrase in the associative array. Um, store the number of times you've seen that phrase in the associative array using that phrase as an index. And then at the very end, you'll do something like that for loop to go through and print out all the phrases. But again, write some code, hardwire some things, just try to, to um, throw some phrases in and, and dump out everything in your hash and see, see what's happening.
All right, so I'm going to stop recording.